London. So now what we're going to do, Paul, is I'm just going to listen to some uh, information about the airport, okay, and find out what weather is, what runway we're going to be using. So I'm just going to put it on. Turn that up. I'm not getting the call. Sorry? I can hear you. No, I'm not hearing me. I'm only getting me. Have you turned the volume up on the side? Make sure it's working. Got that. Is it working now? Just make sure you've got the microphone up as close as you as well. Yeah. Got that? Yeah.
and we're just putting the nose of the airplane slightly into wind. There we go, straightening the pedals out, and then to make the parking brake on, we pull it up, put the thing on the button, and then let go. And then we reset the power. So we're going to go back towards the checklist now. So, power checks location. The aircraft is positioned into wind and clear all land of any taxiway obstructions. Yeah. Parking brake is on, and it's set to 1,200 RPM. Yeah. So I need to change the fuel to the forward tank now, which is the left-hand tank. So that is the knob. So make sure it goes in and it clicks. That's it. Right. And, yep. Double confirmed. Oop. Last time. <laughs> make sure it's in. So we're now on the left-hand tank, which is the forward of the two tanks. So we're going to make sure the T's and P's are in the green, which they are, and we're going to set 2,000 RPM. So we're just covering the brakes again, because we're going to put the power on, and we're just going to slowly push the throttle forward until we set it to 2,000 RPM. So there's the 2,000 RPM set. So going back to the checklist, it says apply the carburetor heat, and there should be a max drop of 75 RPM. So if you want to put the carburetor heat on, watch it drop. So there you go, there's the drop of about 75 RPM. Yeah. And if you return it back to the car position, and it recovers back to its original value. So we're going to check the magnetos now. So we're going to check the left and right in turn, and we're looking for a drop of about 175. So if you want to hold the key and just do one click to the left, see how it drops? Yep. And if you put it back to the bath, it goes back to its original value. So we're going to do two clicks this time to go to the other one. And again, there's the drop, and back to both. Good. Yep. Okay, so amateur is still charging, and the gyro is still sucking. There we go. So we're going to retard the throttle now back to idle. Make sure the engine idles properly and doesn't go out. There we go. And then we're going to reset it back to 1200 RPM. There you go. So we can turn the page on the checklist now. So, trimmer is set for takeoff. So, if we just look down here at the trim wheel, we're making sure that we have it in the neutral takeoff position, which it is. We can tighten the throttle friction nut. So, there you go, that's finger tight. The mixture is fully rich. Magneto, we double check to make sure it is in the both position, which it is. Uh, we don't need the pitot heat today. And uh, we're going to check that the primer is in and locked before we take off. So, it is, it's confirmed, it's locked. We're going to put the fuel pump on. So if you want to just click that one up for me, Paul, that's it, the fuel pump on. Fantastic. We don't need the flap for takeoff, but we're going to make sure the instruments and everything are set up before we take off. So on the compass, if we look down here, we get that to be 135. So we're just going to synchronize it with this direction. So we push this little button in here and we rotate it until we have 135 set. So the two now are both agreeing with each other. Yep. And we've got a QNH of 1014 and that's set as well. Okay, Paul? So, harnesses and hatches are all fast as above good. sea level, then. Uh, that is as above sea level now, which is about 34 feet, it should be, that's showing about 40 feet, so... Uh, uh, the heat is uh, set to cold, and controls again, we just check again to make sure we have full and free movement on the controls, and the transponder, he's not given us a score yet. So that's us done with the pre takeoff checks all completed. So what, again, what we do is we just close the throttle to stop the airplane jumping forward, and then we release the brake. And then we're just going to line the airplane up towards the holding point, but we're not going to go over that holding point. We've not been cleared onto the runway, so we mustn't cross that holding point. There we go. And I'm just going to re-put the parking brake on for a moment, and reset the 1200 RPM. So I'm just going to close this little window up, because it gets very drafty. It gets very drafty with the window open. And we're going to do the takeoff together, Paul, okay? okay? So what I'd like you to do is put your hands lightly on the controls for me. Okay, you don't need to grip it finger tight. Yeah, it's very, it's light. very light yeah. fingers and thumb, that's all that's required, okay? So I'm going to start to put the power fully forward, okay? Do you want to keep it straight on the runway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's nice, gentle time. movements to keep us on the centre line of the runway, okay? Once it starts to go to about 65, we're just going to gradually start pulling back, okay? Yeah, let's just get some drafted. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll do the radio call for us. Uh, Golf Brown Whiskey's holding at Alpha 3, ready for departure. 
Control for whiskey, via Alpha 3, line up runway 10, Scork 0450 with altitude. That's Corking 0450, via right, Alpha 3, line up runway 10, Golf Power Whiskey. So he's asked us to squawk that, so 0450. Okay, we can go on the runway now. So, uh, just checking nobody's coming in on top of us. That's all clear. So, I don't know. Golf Power Whiskey, left turn out, runway 10, clear for takeoff, surface winds 180, uh, 4 knots estimated. Ah, uh, clear takeoff, runway 10, Golf Power Whiskey. So, just follow us round on the centre line. Far better today. Sorry? Okay. Yeah, far better today. It was obviously that head uh, not turned up on the headphone. Probably his is right, well. yeah. Are you ready, Paul? Yeah, he's cleared us to take off. So we can start to put the power in now. Very little wind today. So as I put the power in, we're just keeping it straight down the runway. So that's it, and we just take a bit of weight off the nose wheel. So as we're going down the runway, power is set. T's and P's are all good. And the SPD is coming alive, so we can start to pull back. Start pulling back, that's it. I just, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we're just going to come a little bit to the right because we've just. That's it. And we're just climbing the airplane away from the ground. So we're just coming to the left a little bit. So we want to see if we get the ball in the middle, so press the right one to get the ball in the middle. So we're going to start a very gentle turn to the left now, so we have a little look out to the left to make sure there's nobody to bump into, and we're just going to start a very, very gradual turn to the left. That's it, that's all that's required for. From this line, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, we were talking about it being bumpy last time, Russ was saying it's the heat coming off Tesco. <laughs> Just that you get, you get yeah. the heat coming off the building, it kind of warms it up, the heat on the ground. It was quite smooth this morning, so it should be quite alright again. Now? A friend of mine was saying it's similar when you go over a field and there's the plastic on the field that you get, yeah. you get the, the heat. Can I just get it going? Thank you very much. Just make sure it's... There we go. Top of the Foxy Whiskey, Foxy Arrow, Weevil 3, John. So the ball's just coming out, so you need to press a bit of right rudder to put the ball back in the middle. So press the right pedal forward. That's it. Press E to the tall power. QP 1012. QP 1012, and for E to the tall power. Right there, it's the tall. So we're just going to climb a little bit higher, Paul. We're going to go up to about 1,500 feet just to stay out of the clouds. Roll it to the right a bit, that's it. So there's the 1500 feet, so we can gradually start to lower the nose now, and we allow the airspeed right. to build back up. That's it, we just allow the airspeed to build up. Now with your right hand, put the right hand on the throttle, and very, very slowly start to pull it back to 2200 RPM. Well, we'll have a look here. Contact radar, 119, this one, I'm five. Contact radar, 119, this one, I'm five. Go on, I'm always going. In the skip, uh, mid, uh, or eight pickup. That's it. Okay, I just have control for one second to make sure everything's uh, all nicely in trim for this port. There we go. Ah, back to the radar. This is Golf Bravo, Romeo Bravo Whiskey. Departing the zone to the north for the basic service. Golf Bravo, Romeo Whiskey, Blackwood Tyler, basic service. Ah, basic service, Golf Bravo Whiskey. Okay, Paul, so we're going to have a little practice now at re-trimming, okay? Yep. So it's just a little bit of revision of what you did in uh, the previous lesson with Russell. So I'm going to upset the trim, what I'd like you to do, I'd like you to put it back to the datum attitude. So the datum attitude, if you put your thumb roughly on the bonnet, you can see the horizon, that was roughly about a thumb up, okay? And it's also parallel with it as well. So if I say we cover it back to the datum attitude, I'd like you to put the airplane nose where it is now. Okay, so I'm just going to upset the trim for this part, and when I tell you to recover back to the datum attitude, I'd like you to, like, let me control a second, <laughs> I'm just going to upset it, 
I'm pulling back slightly. And I'm putting a bit of left foot. Can you see how it's not it this time? Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to go the other way now. So I'm going to push it all the way forward. It wants to go up and to the left. So as it wants to go up, I'm going to start pushing forward. I'm going to put a bit of right rudder. Can you see how it's yeah, not yeah. done it this time? Yeah. And we've kept it kind of uniformly straight. So what I'm going to do, Paul, is I want you to do that for me as well. So I'm just going to... Make sure you're playing with my trim. That's it. And if you just want to turn me in that kind of direction for the moment, please, Paul. I'll just open a bit of the vents because it gets a little bit warm. <laughs> there we go. That bird play there. That he's a bit near. <laughs> Okay, so in your own time, Paul, just put the car out to heat for me, and I'd like you to reduce the power, but keep the nose where it is. So we know it's going to drop, and we know it's going to go to the right. So we need to start to pull back right here, and a little bit of left. That's it. That's it. Fantastic. So keep pulling back to keep the nose up a bit. Fantastic. Now slowly start to push it forward for me, Paul. And as the nose wants to go up to the left, we need to start pushing forward, and a bit of right ready to keep it straight. Keep the ball in the middle as well, Paul. That's it. Keep the wings level, all the way to four. That's it. Now that's it. Fantastic, Paul. Well done, mate. Well done. So you can clearly see the relationship. Whenever we change the throttle, we might need to change the rudder a little bit as well, OK? So just put it at 22 for me, and we're just fine. Fantastic. So we're going to look now at deploying the flaps. And this is the flap lever in the airplane down here. Okay, so we're going to just start to deploy the flaps first. So the first thing that we're going to check to, before we deploy the flaps is we're going to make sure that we're in the white arc. Remember, we want to make sure we're in the flap extension speed. So there's the beginning of the white arc, and we're in the white arc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one stage of flapping. There you go, and I'm just going to read through. Okay, so again, speed still in the white arc. We like to speed a bit more, that's it. Okay, there we go, that's the second stage, I'm going to re-trim. Almost feel it immediate. Oh, yeah, you can feel it kind of pop up. And again, I'm going to put the third one in. And again, re-trim. There you go. So nice and relaxed on that control, nice and relaxed. So there you go, put a bit of power to help the speed a little bit. So there you go, there's all three stages of flap deployed. And we're going to look at raising them now. So the first thing that we need to check is make sure that we're in the green arc. So we've got safe speed, and we're above 300 feet. And we are level, so I can get rid of the drag flap for us. There we go. And just let the airplane accelerate. So before, that's it, and re trim. So now again. Making sure that the uh, speed is in the green arc, limitation. We're at roughly 300 feet. And we're not descending with a little bit of positive climb, which is good. I uh, can remove the second stage. Let the aeroplane accelerate a bit, and trim again. And then again, checking, making sure it's in the green arc. Safe altitude above 300 feet. And we've got, there we go, a bit of a positive rate of climb again. And we can retract the flap and we trim. All right, Paul. Yeah. So I'm going to get you to do exactly that what I just did. Uh, but I might see that pull tower. Yeah. Just do a gentle turn before we put his path to the right. So I'm in a good lookout first. That's it. And watch the nose doesn't come too high. So in your own time, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to repeat exactly what I did. I'd like you to start with the limitation check first, and then I'd like, yeah, I'd like you to lower it in stages, remembering to re-trim between every stage. Okay, so don't pull out your left hand when you do it. That's it. 
And we sent the hog and level. Papa Red Elk Dog driving the bumper off to Juliet. Three the ball in the middle. That's it. The ball out to the right, past the right with the pedal. The Bravo Papa Lima jumped to the hole. Okay, and it's nice and trim. For runaway. Uh, make sure it's nice and trim first, yep. So if we let go, it stays there. So again, starting with a limitation pass, so check the speed. Operation, we can put another stage of flapping. Indication, that's it, we're in the second dent, and if you want to re-trim again the airplane. That's the one, hit the bottom in the middle. Procedural service, report to the bottom in the middle, relax those feet a bit, that's it. And again, starting with a limitation check, check that's in the white arc. Operation, we can put a final stage in, so click it again. Okay, indication, we're in the third dent, and re-trim to keep the airplane level for. Yep, fantastic ball, well done now. Okay, we're just going to come on it again, so we're going to have another quick look to the right to make sure there's no other aeroplanes there, which there's not, so we can start a gradual turn to the right. So we'll just go out towards the water, northbound. That's it, Paul. So this time, Paul, we're going to look at retracting the flaps. Now, remember, there were three things we had to check. So the first thing that we're going to check is make sure that the needle is in the green arc. Yeah. So we've got a green arc. Are we about 300 feet? Yeah. Fantastic. Are we not descending? No. No. So now you can put the finger on the button and just let for one stage. That's it. Okay, so let the airplane settle down and we'll retrim the airplane. Actually, that pull the nose up, that's it. Good. So now we're going to look at doing, removing the second stage, so speed checked. Same altitude above the 300 feet, we're not descending, very slight pussy for it at a time, that's it. Good, and retrim. Fantastic, and then again we're going to do the final stage, so speed check first, so, yeah. Yeah. so we're in the green arc, same altitude, and zero slash positive rate of climb, and that's the final one on the trim. Fantastic part. So that's how we deploy and uh, retract the flaps. Rocket science, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So I'm just going to do a, a quick uh, check on the aircraft system. So T's and P's are all still in the green. Hammers are still charging. Gyro is still sucking. Just make sure the carpet goes hot. And the DI and compass are synchronized. Now we've got the correct QNH set. Fantastic. That cloud coming in. Uh, so we're just going to slightly come to the, the lower. That's it. So it's just coming below it and coming out of it. Fantastic. Okay, we're going to show you how to use the carburetor heat now. So this is the carburetor heat down here, and we've currently got 22 RPM set on the RPM indicator. So what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if there's any ice in the engine. So what we need to do, obviously there's cloud today and the temperature is only 15, so with a temperature drop we could get ice below, can't we? So put the carburetor heater hot and look at the RPM and you'll notice that it starts to drop. Can you see the drop in the RPM? About okay. one. Yeah, yeah, about 75 to 100 RPM. So that's allowing the warmer from the exhaust to come back into the engine and to melt any ice that's from. So let's look at it. Let's see if it starts to melt any ice. If it starts to melt any ice, the gap would get bigger and we'd start to get an increase in power, wouldn't we? Yeah. It doesn't look like it's, it doesn't look like it's changing, does it? It looks like it's staying pretty much where it is. So return the car to heat to cold now. It's been about 20 seconds. And can you see how it returned to its original value of 2200 yeah. RPM? If there was any ice present, when we put it back, obviously we'd get like, a bigger increase in the, uh, uh, open the gap for it, it could have increased more than it. And obviously that would tell us that there's ice present, and we'd repeat it again, 
until it went back to its original value. Okay, Paul? Fantastic. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head back towards the airport. So if you can tell me where Blackfield Tower is, where we'll Fleetwood's over that yeah, way. Actually, yeah. So if you want to turn the airplane left towards Fleet, having a good look out as we turn to make sure there's no aircraft to bump into. I've never seen the seat before it's <laughs> taken off that way and you've never seen any of them. So what we're going to do this time, there's Fleetwood, so we know Blackpool is going to be further to the south, so we're going to head towards Fleetwood and then we're going to go back down the coast towards Blackpool, okay Paul? So that's looking at all the auxiliary controls, I'll show you the mixture when we get underground. So that's it, we'll just head towards Fleetwood. Uh, have you got your checklist on so can't we just get the checklist? That's it. It's on the back seat, there we go, yep. I've got it. Okay, I'm going to show you something now called a Frieda check. If I can find it on the checklist, there we go, a cruise check or a Frieda check. So from time to time when we've been flying for say about 10 minutes or 15 minutes, we're just going to start to make sure that the airplane's in a healthy condition. Yeah. And we call it the Frieda check because that's what it abbreviates to. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to check the fuel. So we still have fuel pressure and we're checking the gauges which are correct now. We took off on the left hand tank and we had two hours in the left hand tank and one hour thirty in the right. We've been flying now for about twenty minutes. So we must have one hour forty in the left and one hour thirty in that one. So three hours ten total. Right. Yep, fantastic. Radio navigate. Well, we're currently speaking to Blackpool radar at the minute on the frequency of 119.195 and we've got the tower stand up in standby, 118.4, which is the next person we're going to go. So we've already selected it ready to flip over. We're also squawking 0450 for Blackpool air traffic control. Engine. T's and P's in the green, so we have a little look down there at the temperatures and pressures, and can you see they're all also in the green arcs? So we still have oil pressure, we still have fuel pressure, and we still have oil temperature, which is good. People always forget these ones, but we also check the amateur still charging. And we'll just check down there to make sure that the gyro, which runs some of these instruments down here, is still working. So the next thing we're going to also check is people have set the car feet. So I'll show you how to do the car feet. So note the RPM, apply it to hot, and there's the drop. So let's just watch it for about 5 to 10 seconds to see if it starts to rise. It doesn't look like it's rising to me. So if we put it back to cold position, it should go back to its other one. That's it. And it returns back to its engine. So the direction indicator, we need to make sure that that compass and that direction is still synchronised. So we need to hold the wings level. If we don't hold it level, it starts to wander off. So I've got 240 on there. Yep, 240. So, yeah. so we just push that in and turn it till it goes to 240. I'm just going to make a quick call. Yeah, I've got a problem with you. Whiskey, Fleetwood, where are you, John? Couple of feet, contact Blackwood Tower for John, 118, that's more Contact Tower, 118, that's more for I've got a problem with Whiskey. Just let's turn to those the coastline for me, please, Paul. Thank you very much. And while you're doing that, I'll just contact Blackpool Tower. Blackpool Tower, this is Golf Bravo, Romeo Bravo Whiskey, Fleetwood for rejoin. Golf Bravo, Romeo Bravo Whiskey, uh, Blackpool Tower. Uh, Confirming you to rejoin. Hey, then to rejoin Golf Bravo Whiskey. Golf Bravo Whiskey, a rotor report east of the tall tower. QFE 1012, runway 28. And we've got East of the Tall Tower, KFE 1012, and Golf Bravo Whiskey. So the answer's on the other way, so the wind, the wind must turn. So we're just going to come left slightly, Paul. Can you just see the bend in the river? Yeah. Well, uh, you just go in that direction in general, we'll find, so good look out. Wind has changed, we've got... Wind has changed when we take off. <laughs> and there was me, I was going to go down the coast. <laughs> Past the diet, so just do a little gentle turn, because we need to come position to the east of Blackpool Tower. So again, just a flip to go to them as the uh, the wind. Yeah, it's just a little flip up here, and I'll just reset that for us. And that is it, apart from the altimeter, which I'll just reset for the QFE for landing. OK, Paul, so every 10 to 15 minutes, that'll do that, Paul. 
We're going through the speed of check. Now we start just going to make sure everything's OK. Okay, Paul, so homework. <laughs> we love homework in this game. Just start in your armchair, just memorizing what each item is and what you need to check. All right, Paul. I'll just put that there again. Did you want to go past the tall tower to... Uh, uh, I've yet to see the sea from. <laughs> but you miss it with a, with a wing on that side, don't you? Yeah, you do. I'm just going to gain this little bit of altitude back at Paul, that's it. Uh, keep a good look out for any airplanes as we get closer to the airport. Then also watch out for the helicopters because they're about 600 or something. The, the helicopter, the helimed sometimes comes under at 600 when it's being on this batch call, yeah. So there we go, that's all the lines, 1500. So what we're going to do, Paul, is we're going to kind of head towards that little white pole sticking up. Can you just see over there? There's a gas tank there. There's a little white pole standing up here. That is where we need to be, Paul. So we're just going to point towards there. And your next tower is to report east of the tall tower. Now, believe it or not, the tall tower is that tower there. Here. Yeah. When I say black pool tower and talk to them, he's done they look out there. The amount of passengers yeah. that think I'm talking to people in there, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic, Paul. Yeah, it's the only way to stop confusion. <laughs> I mean, it's a great landmark, but it's really confusing. Isn't it? <laughs> Blackpool Tower is Blackpool Tower. Blackpool Tower is Blackpool Tower, and Blackpool Air Traffic Control Tower is something different. So you can just see the runway over there, Paul. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're eventually going to go in a southerly direction, and the runway is going to start to come in on the right-hand side. As it starts to come in along the centre line, we're just going to do a gentle turn to the right to line the airplane up on the centre line, OK? We're gradually going to start coming down and coming down and coming down. As we get closer to the runway, we're going to start to fly along the centre line towards the opposite end of the runway. And then we're going to start to close the throttle gently, and we're going to keep the nose wheel of the airplane up off the ground, and the airplane back wheels are just going to sit down on the runway. OK, Paul? Any questions? No? Fantastic. Ah, Golf Bravo Whiskey is east of the tall tower. Golf Bravo Whiskey, report right base runway 28. Report right base 28, Golf Bravo Whiskey. So I'm just going to start a little descent now to get us down to circuit high. So I'm just going to take the power off. My nose is just going to drop a little bit. Okay, Paul. Now you practice it low in the flap, so we're going to put two stages of flapping now. So starting with a limitation, are we in the white arc? In the white. So would you like to put one stage of flapping for me? That's it, fantastic. And again, we're just going to retrim slightly, just to get the speed back. And again, limitation, operation, indication. So, limitation, are we in the white arc? Yep, so one more stage, that's the operation, and that's the second click, so we know it's in the indication. And we're just going to raise the nose slightly, just to slow the air speed down a little. Fantastic. So you can see the runway just over there. Yep. Just relax that left hand a minute because we're just going to lose a little bit of altitude. All right, Paul. So I'm just going to do some uh, pre landing checks in my head. So brakes off, goes down. Uh, Field pump and landing light can go on for landing. Seat belts are secured and fastened, yep. and the seat belts are in the right position. Fantastic, uh, that's set, that's set. Harness and hatches are all good for landing. Fantastic. So I'm just going to do a call now. Golf Bravo Whiskey is right, base 28. Golf Bravo Whiskey, report final, runway 28, number 1. Report final, number 1, Golf Bravo Whiskey. So we're going to keep coming down in this direction until it starts to come in now, Paul. It's from this way, my life, isn't it? So there's the runway. We're just going to keep coming in. And when you're happy that we're going to go on the centre line, I want you to start a very gradual turn to the right, OK? I also this is the further out before you start. <laughs> no, that's not too... that's not bad, that. I'm 
generally, even though the fact is still at that speed slow down tiny bit. That's it. Go for our whiskey, final swipe. Go for our whiskey, runway 2 exit, land 7 to 7 0 7 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 That's it. So we're coming down. That's it, Paul. So we're keeping it on the centre line. And we're coming down nice and slow. So if at any point I say I have control, just take your hand and crunch it off it, OK? So there we go, we're just going to start to fly, lift the nose a little bit and start to fly towards the end of the runway, that's it. Fly towards the end of the runway, hold it. Hold it. And the longer you go, the better, you, the better you are. There you go. <laughs> That's what Russ was saying, the longer you keep it in the air, he says... The yeah, he just loses all the yeah. lift off the wings, it loses all the energy. Top of the right, 3-1 Alpha, 2 ANT. Very last one, isn't it? Yep. 3-1 Alpha, 2 ANT, go for Whiskey. So yeah, we just missed this Delta intersection, the last and one. it's just the one past that. Fantastic, Paul, enjoy that. As Ross said, we're on the ground. <laughs> in one piece, and the other plane's still here. We've got the same amount of landings and takeoffs. <laughs> landings are controlled crashes. <laughs> so this is the intersection that we need to come off. So we're just going to start to pick up this yellow line here before we pass. So you need to stop putting a bit of light rudder in. That's it. And I'm just going to apply the brakes for you just to slow us down. And now that we're off the runway, we can do our after London checks. So I'll just do the after London checks for you. That's it. Um, so it's neutral. Fantastic. So if you want to go up practicing again, we'll open that little window again because it will get warm otherwise. That's it. So just keep us on this white line, please, Paul, using the rudder pedals, and eventually overhead you're going to see a yellow line. Yeah. And we're, we're just going to set yep, we're gonna start way. to pick that up, and as we go back around, it's the number two that we need. And whenever it splits, we go to the left of the two splits. A friend who's a press officer at Manchester Airport, she put a great picture on, just apparently one, once every now and again. <laughs> she got this great picture of being in the car and out the back windows, the A380. <laughs> I says, only wonder when he, when he starts sounding on to try and overtake. I says, that's your problem. <laughs> but it just literally filled the back window of the car. Yeah. You know, one of those moments. I think. So there's the yellow line, Paul. So start to push the right rudder pedal in. You probably need to push it all the way to the floor. That's the one. Now, as it starts to straighten back up, we're going to have to start taking, removing that right rudder pressure off. That's it. So we're just slightly to the left of the centre line, so just put a little bit of light rudder in to correct it to come back onto the centre line. That's it, that's the middle. So we're just going to quickly check the brakes to make sure they work before we go on the apron. There we go, brakes work on my side. And just check yours gradually, just, that's it. And it's the number two that we need to come off. So just watch that grid, that little part of it, the nose wheel doesn't go down it. That's uh, that. <laughs> Did he mention the yeah, yeah. yeah, he says keep, keep to the other side of the grid. Yeah, we're off with the grid and the, the top. That's it, as it splits, come round to the left for me, please, Paul. And then obviously when it splits round again. Okay, well, I have control for just parking the airplane, thank you very much.
I'm getting Asbro for doing handbrakes in one day. <laughs> OK, so we're just going to go back to the checklist for our shutdown checks now, OK? So I'm just going to go down to the shutdown. So the first thing is uh, location, and the parking brake is on with the engine RPM reset. It's 1230 seconds. So we're going to check the magnetos for a dead cut. So there's the magnetos down there, so that's it. So click, drop 75. Yeah, so back to bar. And then we're checking the other magnetos, which is two clicks. And again, we get the drop. And when we return it back to the bar, it returns back to its original value. Fantastic. So we can turn the radios off now. So we'll just turn these off. So that's the volume and on buttons as well. Uh, for this one, the off is just press and hold it. And if you want to turn that one off, so it's turn the volume down and then eventually it'll click and it'll go off. Same with that one. And again, with that one at the top, that, and then we go off.